Hey everyone, this is Gautam again. In today's video, I am going to break down the target lock system I have implemented in Unity. This feature allows the player to lock onto the enemies, switch targets left and right, and also smoothly control the camera during the combat. Let's break down the camera setup first for the target lock system. As you can see here, I am using a state driven camera. Uh, under this, I have two more cameras. The first one is the normal free look camera where position control is set to orbital follow. And it's uh, the default camera when no target is locked. Then comes to the second one, which is target lock camera. It gets activated whenever we lock onto a target. Here the position control is set to the third person follow. Also I have passed a target group reference inside look at target uh, field. So we'll see what is a target group later on this session. The state driven camera is uh, helping to switch in between these two cameras according to the requirements. As you can see it is using an animator with two empty animations inside this. The default is uh, the free look camera and the other one is locked camera. Now inside the Cinemachine state driven camera component, if you go to the instruction field, I have assigned the cameras according to their required states which is coming from the animator. Also I have set the default blend field to each in out with uh, 0.2 second delay. Here below you can see that uh, I have given the priority for the free look camera 10 and for the target lock camera 5. And yeah, this is all I have done inside the state driven camera. We will go to our target group game object. Inside this, you can see I have a component uh, called Cinemachine Target Group, which is used to manage multiple targets. This helps the camera smoothly frame both the player and the current enemy, keeping them in focus during the combat. Inside the targets field, I have passed common target object reference which will follow the uh, position of the current logged target also I have passed the player reference now I have given the reference of the whole game object at uh, look at target field of uh, target lock camera and yes this is a whole setup of camera I have done for the target lock mechanism now we will check on to the um, coding side that uh, how the target lock uh, system has been implemented so for the whole target lock system uh, I have a script called uh, target lock handler which is a mono behavior script so at the start let's go through the variable section I have a player controller reference of my player here then I have a animator reference which is for the camera animator this is the one camera animator then in the settings section I have uh, first active target it helps me to define whenever a target is locked. It will be true if it is locked and it will be false if it is not locked. Then uh, I have enemy detect range which is having a range uh, of uh, minimum 5 to maximum 50. Then it collects all nearby targets in this list. Then this is the current target like whichever target is currently focused on. So it will have the reference of that. Then in the camera section, uh, we have both the camera's reference as a game object, free look camera and the target lock camera. Then uh, I have uh, passed the reference of enemy layer that we will be only uh, checking for the enemies, not other objects available in the scene. And this one, a action, uh, which will be triggering whenever the target is locked or unlocked. And uh, inside this action, I am passing a bool parameter, which is defining that the character is currently locked or unlocked. It helps the animation script to perform animations, uh, locomotion animations basically, according to the current situation that uh, if the character is locked, it will perform a separate animation. If the character is not locked, it will perform a separate animation. All right, then let's look at the target lock function. This is the function responsible for uh, locking onto a target or unlocking it depending on the input parameter. Bullwell determines whether we want to lock or unlock. If it is true, we want to lock and if it is false, uh, we want to unlock. Now let's get inside the if else condition. If the bool value is true, we will get inside the true part 
where uh, you can see i am calling a function called uh, collect targets and get most in front target which is responsible for find all the nearby valid targets and determine the most in front target and in the out parameter we are getting the most in front target then here we are checking if the value target is found target me dot set target updates the position of the target marker to the particular enemy then here i am setting the target graphics to true that we can uh, notice the particular target and also i am setting the boolean of active target to true that we will know that currently a active target is available then i am just switching the cameras from a free look to target lock camera then in the outer else part if we want to unlock the target i am simply clearing all the nearby targets as well as i am setting the target graphics uh, to false and also setting uh, active target to false and switching the cameras back to the normal camera and here at the end of the function i am invoking the action according to this the other scripts like animation scripts will perform next let's look at the color target and uh, get most in front target function this function is responsible for uh, collecting all nearby enemies and determine which one is uh, most in front of the player it takes an uh, output parameter target uh, most in front which will store the enemy that is most in front then found targets is the temporary list to store all the valid nearby targets here we use physics dot overlap sphere to detect all the colliders within the enemy detect range around the player for each collider we check if it is the target of enemy then we get me live component to check if the enemy is alive in the world it helps me to uh, detect that uh, the can, uh, enemy currently readable or not suppose the enemy is uh, dead uh, already so we don't need to record that particular enemy so for that it is helping me then after checking the me live exist and the enemy is active in the world we will get inside the if condition here i am calculating the direction vector from the player to the enemy then here i am using the vector 3 dot dot and to check uh, how aligned the enemy is with the cameras for a direction then i am proceeding to the next if condition if the dot value is only greater than 0.5 this condition helps me to collect uh, all the enemies in front of the player not behind the player then i am doing a recast to check if uh, there is an obstacle in between the player and the enemy if the ray hits something then we are proceeding inside the if condition then again we are checking another if condition inside this if the hit collider is the same as the enemy collider then again we are checking another if condition inside it if the hit collider is same as the enemy collider then only we are going to add the enemy inside the found targets and in case of false that means the enemy is visual and uh, safe to add so that's why i am uh, adding it directly to the found targets without any checkings then here if no valid enemies are found we clear the nearby targets list and return null for the target most in front after that i am sorting the found targets from left to right relative to the camera after sorting i am storing the collected valid targets in the public nearby targets list then i am looping through all the found targets to find the most in front of the camera the target with the highest dot value relative to the camera's forward is considered the most in front finally we set the most in front uh, variable to the enemy that is most in front this target is now ready to be locked by the player now let's take a look at the switch target function this function allows the player to switch the current lock target either to the left or right the function takes a boolean switch to left if the switch to left is true the target will switch to the one on the left otherwise to the right the first line checks if the target is currently locked if not the function returns immediately before switching i am refreshing the list of nearby valid targets and determine the most in front target this ensures we are always working with an up to date list of enemies here if no valid targets are found after collecting we unlock the target and return then we get the index of the current target in the nearby targets list 
if the current target is not found which is minus 1 we use the most in front target as the reference for switching this section calculates the next target index based on the direction of switching if switching left we decrease the index but never go below 0 if switching right we increase the index but never exceed the last target in the list after calculating the new index we update the current target to the new target finally if the new target exists we adjust the target marker to the new target's position also i am setting the camera damping to 1 to smoothly focus on the new target next let's go over the switch cams function this function handles the switching between free look camera and the target lock camera based on whether the target is locked here we grab references to all necessary components axis controller free look controls the player input for the free look camera cinemation free look cam is the free look camera component cinemation look cam is the target lock camera component cinemation lock cam group framing handles the framing if the free look input controller exists, I enable it only when active target is false. This prevents player input from moving the free look camera while the target is locked. Now, if a target is locked, that means uh, active target is true. We force the target lock camera to match the current position and orientation of the free look camera for smooth transition. Then we play the locked camera animation to switch the camera view. In the else part, if no target is locked, that means active target is false. In that case, I am setting the lock camera damping to 0. Then I force the free look camera to match the target lock camera's position and orientation for a smooth transition. Finally, I am playing the free look camera animation. Now the function get active camera. This function returns the camera that is currently active depending on whether the player is targeting an enemy or not. In other way, if I tell get active camera simply tells us which camera is currently active in the scene. This is useful for calculation or operations that depend on the camera's position or um, forward direction like aiming or rotating the targets. Then inside the fixed update I am checking whether the target is going too far from the player. If it is going too far then I am simply unlocking the target. Now let's look at the update function. This function handles all the player inputs uh, for locking into the target or switching in between the targets. The first part checks for the input to lock or unlock a target. If I press the T key on the keyboard or if I click the right stick button on the gamepad, the script calls that lock target function. This toggles the target lock on and off. Next I am handling the inputs for switching in between targets. This only works when the target is already locked. For the controller input, I am checking the right stick horizontal axis. To avoid small accidental inputs, I have added the dead zone. If I push the stick to left, it calls the switch target with a parameter of true value, which switches the target to the left. And if I push it to right, it calls the switch target with the parameter of false to move to the target on the right. There is also a small cooldown time so that it doesn't keep switching the targets too fast. Finally for the keyboard input, I use Q and E keys. Q switches to the left target and E switches to the right target. Alright, that's the full breakdown of the target lock system. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.